Don't go working on your trombone slide if you haven't ever worked on a trombone slide. It looks deceptively easy. There's a whole lot of things that can go wrong. Howdy friends, welcome back to the House of Tone. My name is Wes Lee. I'm a professional band instrument repair technician. I started a YouTube channel to document my life in the trades and what it is that we do. I appreciate you stopping by the shop today. I've done trombone videos before. It's always precise. Today we're gonna to get even more picky with it. I'm gonna show you some tools and techniques that will help elevate your work. Also gonna do some bad drawing for you. <laughs> Let's get into it. We're gonna use a different set of tools Normally what you see me use is a long trombone rod like this. These work great, but we're going to get even more precise today. We're going to use these. These are 11 inch precision ground trombone rods. They go by the number P88. You can buy them individually or you can buy them in sets. This is the handle that we'll be using. It goes by P88L. We're going to use this precision ground surface plate, which goes by P89. This double handle burnisher, which goes by the handle N87A roller. Topics we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about bends, using the light, the dents, and skew. So we've got our trombone slide. That's about the best drawing I've ever done. Let's talk about light first. Light as it regards to a trombone slide tube under the fluorescence or under these beam lights that we use, we use it in two different ways. We want it to bend this way and so it, we can find specific dents like the glare that's on this board. If we take that, we can move that glare up and down. This is the way it appears on a slide. We've got a dent, and that's going to show us where that dent is. The other thing we use with light is we want it to look like train tracks. And by using the light where it comes like train tracks, then that can show us the bends. That can show us that our tube is going this way or that it's bowed and that's why we hold it and turn it but today we're also going to use this plate to help us see so if i take my slide and i do it just like i was doing with that beam you can see how the light goes up and down and i use that to my advantage so that i can find the dents we have a major dent here. It goes halfway around the tube, and I know that it impacts on the inner slide as well. But if I do this all the way up and down the slide, then I can see all of the little imperfections. We've got some dents here. Now, if we turn this way, now we have the train tracks. And so we can see how it's bent. And then this is probably very hard to pick up on the camera here. But we can see how it's bent. And this is where our surface plate is going to play, come into play. I brought in my portable vise and I'm gonna mount my surface plate in that.
Now I've got the shop set up to take care of this repair. Beautiful finish on this ground surface plate. It's accurate, it's level, and it's perfectly flat. I know that my tube is a point 580 inner diameter. With the long rods, the standard rods, you can get very close. With this style of slug, they are precision ground to be exact. Okay, what we're gonna show is light coming through between the tube and the plate. I'm gonna zoom this in. See right there? That shows our bin and then the bin goes away. And we'll actually be able to see there's the dent, how severe it is right there. So we're gonna get this straightened out. And with just a little bit more. That's looking really pretty good. Now what we've got is only the dented section will have has light coming through it. Let me bring you back in. See here? There's our dent. And that's how far the dent runs out in either direction. So let's take the dent out. I use a wax pencil. And I circle or make just make marks around all the dents. When I have a bunch of dents to do in a tube, I usually lay out sections. And that way I can work off of sections. I want to put this in the middle. And I've got this guide that I'm going to set. The other thing that I like to do is with my wax pencil, I mark some margins. It's easy to get carried away. So you want to give yourself a, a full, a foolproof way of making sure that you stop. This slug is very precision ground to match the inner diameter of this tube and be extremely tight as it goes down. And then it stops, it crashes into the dent. And we actually have to kind of force it a little bit, push it on past there. But it's very tight. Now I'm going to use a rawhide mallet and I want to hit the ridges around the, the dent to soften it. And you can just hear how good contact the rawhide mallet is making. By using the rawhide mallet, you are not, there's no chance of stretching the material. I feel pretty good about that. You can see how much better the slide moves just on that. I'm going to take the burnisher. Now the trick here is to not squeeze too hard. You have a lot of leverage and on these high-end trombone slides, the tubes are really pretty thin. So it's easy for you to completely squash it and create a whole other set of problems for yourself. This is just a frictionless burnish. It's 
See there? That's great. That's how it's supposed to be. With that method, there's no scar. There's no mark on that tube. The stocking here had a bunch of marks on it, so I'm gonna set this and do down there as well. And do the same thing down with the stock. Yeah, I could feel them right there. And this is just a very, very, like I said, it's, you're not squeezing hard. It's a light burnishing action. I suggest if you've never done this, I suggest that you practice on some old slides before you jump in to doing this on a good horn. There was a bit of a learning curve for me. May not be for everybody, but there certainly was for me. feels really nice now I'm going to check my straightness again before I take this rod off I want to check the lower slide just grabbing grabbing the light and rotating it and finding our bins got a little bit of something right here set it for about the middle, lock it down. I'm going to give myself some couple of inches of margin on either side. There's no sharp dent, so there's nothing to hammer. So I'm just going to burnish this. And the dent is never exactly, it's not just located in that one spot. It's going to displace metal over a period, even though it's a sharp dent maybe, it, it's over a period of a couple of inches, a length of a couple of inches, I guess I should say. And I can see the waviness of that is gone. Feels very good. I want to check the straightness of my inner slide on the lower. Check them together. Oh, yeah. Smooth as silk. That's awesome. Man, that's good. Okay, so now I'm going to change out the slug. The Venturi, there's a tube where you put the mouthpiece in. There's a Venturi tube that comes to somewhere around in here. So we can't go in from this side. We have to go in from the stocking side. And I'm just not terribly sure of where that's going to hit. There it is right there. Okay. So I know that's the max depth that I can go. My margin is going to be really kind of tight. You don't have that issue on the lower slide, but you do on the upper slide. And it fits in there very tight. I'm not tapping terribly hard. You can see how much better it rotates already. So, get our burnisher set. Check my straightness. Great. I'm going to check it on the 
surface plate, and finally in the tube itself. <laughs> that is wonderful. If your tube is bent, then as you rotate the tube around the inner and the outer, they will bind. And you'll be able to see it as well as feel it. That's why we work it around in a circle like this. And then we do that with the lower tube and its inner. So we make sure that each set of tubes is aligned with each other. And then we have to put all four together. You see here now what we've got is that the slide is skewed. So the stockings up here are skewed and the tubes are not in line with one another. If we put the slide together, the inner tube is going away from the outer tube. It's not, it's not straight and parallel. go just a little bit at the time you're not trying to squeeze it all or pull it all at one time you can go too far you can wreck you can mess up the brace but it should just do that man that's awesome slide lays right in with itself there's no herky jerkiness as the slide pulls off. There's no pop, there's no spring, it doesn't fly around. And it's as fast as you can move your hand. Oh man, that is a good one. Now the acid test then becomes putting it in playing position because no one plays like this. You play like this. And that's where you want to feel it. And with a dry slide, you feel everything. Man, that is nice. That's great. So it's just as fast as it can be. My hand's having to keep up with the slide, and that's a good thing. We've got to clean up our marks on here. This one is good to go. And that just came out fabulous. If we take those light lines, can't even see where the dent was. Bring it in close. There's no breaks in the lacquer. These tools do such a good job. Well, that slide just came out great. Precision tools take your work to a whole other level. Um, if you've never used these tools before, might be something that you want to look into. Might be something you want to check out. They are game changers. I just love them. I appreciate you coming by the shop today. Appreciate you hanging out. Hope you learned something. Got some tips and tricks and techniques. And um, I'll, of course, put the part numbers down in the description. And uh, you can get up with Faree's tools and get yourself some cool tools. All right, this is Wesley signing out.